Okay, here are your perfect, pro perfect problem five solutions for Math 112. Uh, this Ferris wheel problem is actually a really hard problem. I think I'm going to give you some hints on this to try to make things more reasonable. But the basic idea is you have this Ferris wheel here. It's 100 meters in diameter. So this distance right here is 100. Um, but it doesn't rest against the ground. There's an extra five feet here so that you're not scraping up against the ground when you're riding on this thing. And what I'm trying to do is come up with a function that models the height of a rider. So as you go around, your height would be this distance here. Um, T minutes after they get on the ride. Okay. Um, and you're asked to do that twice. First using the sine function, then using the cosine function. So let's first do this using sine. So if I'm using the sine function, I have f of t, which is my variable, is a times the sine of b t plus c plus d. And if I could figure out a, b, c, and d, I'd be done with the problem. Unfortunately, those are pretty hard to figure out. But as we learned, you can get at those if you can state the amplitude, the midline, the period, and the phase shift. Uh, okay, so to figure out the amplitude, the amplitude is defined to be half the distance from the top to the bottom. So the highest you'll ever be off the ground would be 105 feet. The lowest you'll ever be will be 5 feet. And half the distance between 100, well, the distance between 105 and 5 is 100. And half of 100 is just 50. Uh, the midline is kind of your average height. Um, and you might think it's 50, but it's not because we're 5 feet off the ground. The midline is defined to be the highest plus the lowest divided by 2. So 105 plus 5 divided by 2 is 110 divided by 2, a.k.a. 55. And the period is given to us to be 2 minutes, so we get that there. Uh, the phase shift is very challenging. Um, this is something I am going to tell you, I think. The phase shift is half of a minute. It's 0.5. And the idea there is that if you think about your normal sine function, which is what we're going to use to model this thing, uh, the sine function looks like this. It starts out in the middle and then goes up and then comes back down. Uh, but when you're riding the Ferris wheel, you start out all the way at the bottom. So what I want is a function that will start all the way at the bottom. So you kind of think about what you'll have to do to this um, to shift it so that you start all the way at the bottom. If you kind of draw a wave that starts all the way at the bottom like this one does, uh, let's see if I can draw this really carefully. It looks something like that. So if you stare at the thing in red here and the thing in blue here, you might notice that this part in blue is the same as this part in red. I can picture a sine graph that starts right here and then goes up and then back down and then back up here. That graph that I just shaded in in red is the same as the graph in blue here, it's shifted a little bit to the right. How far to the right do I have to shift it? Well, I wanna shift it to the point, I wanna take advantage of the fact that to get all the way around this ride takes two full minutes. So to get from the bottom to the middle, to get from here to here, would take a quarter of two minutes, AKA 0.5. I think that's really challenging. So I'm gonna email everybody and say, hey, the phase shift is 0.5, is what I want you to do here. Um, and even this, I think it's a shifted to the right. Uh, you might think the phase shift would be Nick, whatever. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to change this problem. I'm going to make the phase shift equal to 0.5. If you have this information, I think you can come up with this function right here. To come up with this function, first, the amplitude. Uh, A here is not the amplitude. It's the absolute value of A that's the amplitude. Uh, so you don't know if A is 50 or negative 50. However, I do tell you up here that make A positive. So A equals 50. Uh, the midline there's no ambiguity about it. It automatically tells you that D equals 55. The period, 2 pi divided by B is always equal to the period, which is equal to 2. So you know the period's 2. What you're trying to solve for is B. If you solve this equation for B, you get that B must be equal to pi. That's because 2 pi divided by pi is just 2, or because you multiply both sides by B and then divide by 2, and you get that B is equal to pi. And now you're trying to figure out the phase shift well, you know that negative C divided by B, which is equal to pi, is equal to the phase shift, which is 0.5, but I'll write it as 1 half. Uh, and I can solve this 
for c, if I multiply both sides by pi, and then by the negative, I get that c is equal to negative pi over 2. So this would be my phase, or this would be my value of c is negative pi over 2. And so all I have to do is copy this with these values in there. I say I got 50 times the sine of b, which is pi, times t, plus c, but c is this negative number, so I got plus negative pi over 2 plus d. So I get 55. So this would be the answer to part A. For part B, it's a little bit different, um, but I'll be able to reuse most of my stuff. Uh, maybe I'll call it g of t here. And it's now a times the sine of, not the sine, the cosine, b, t, plus c, plus d. Uh, the only difference in part two is this model it using the cosine. So things will be a little bit different. Oh, and by the way, using negative value for a. So that'll make life a little bit easier. Um, the cosine function starts out up at the top here and then kind of goes down. It's the mirror image of this thing in red. I guess I can draw it. So it looks something like this. Um, but what I want is the thing in red, right? I want to start out at the bottom, not at the top. Oh, no problem. Just flip the orientation. Multiply this by a negative. Remember up here when we said the amplitude was 50 and therefore A equals 50? Down here, the amplitude still equals 50. It's hard to read. But now that tells us that A is equal to negative 50 because uh, I want to switch the orientation so that I start at the right spot. The nice thing is now I start at the right spot, period, so I won't have to have any phase shift. My phase shift can be zero. Uh, the midline is still equal to 55, and that still tells us that D is equal to 55. The period is still equal to 2, and that still tells us that B is equal to pi. Uh, but now the phase shift is equal to zero. Because when we flip the orientation here, we went from green to red, and red was exactly what we wanted. The phase shift is zero, so therefore C equals zero. And so now I can copy this. I can say G of T is equal to A, which is 50, negative 50, times the cosine now of B, which is pi, times T, plus C, but plus zero. You don't even need to write that, plus 55. Uh, finally, I want to redraw this picture, specifically the part in red, but maybe do it a little bit neater. So let's see if I can do that here. Uh, I want a graph where I start down at the bottom, and then I want to go up, reach some maximum, come back down, and I want this to continue forever. So I'll throw a little arrow here. And... I want one full revolution, so from here back down to here, to last exactly two minutes. So therefore this is one, and this is 0.5, and this is 1.5. It's hard to read, maybe I'll leave the halves out. Sure. Uh, and my amplitude, well let's see, I have to draw this really carefully. I want this thing to get, oh that was a bad spot to put my axis. I want it to get as low as five and as high as 105. So that scale was perfect, but I don't want to start out at a negative value. I want to start out here at 5, and I want to go all the way up to 105. So really what I should do is maybe I'll even throw a midline in there. Draw something that looks like this. Yeah, it's hard to draw on a computer. And then it starts heading back up again here. And this point is exactly two minutes into the ride. This point is exactly one minute into the ride. This point here is one and a half minutes into the ride. And this point here is one half minutes, one half minute into the ride. Um, and I think this will be the graph that I'm looking for. You can continue it in both directions if you want. Um, Note that the height goes from 5 up to 105. I have a midline here at 55. That's consistent with what I found. And a period, an entire cycle, takes two to do. So this is both the thing in blue and the thing in green. It's this answer here. I'm going to call this good.